Hi, my name is David Eiler. I'm a member of the PAS Board of Advisors, and this is uh, the first drum break video that PAS is now doing. Uh, first one for me, and I have three of the world's top artists here for our Day of Percussion for tomorrow, our 27th annual Day of Percussion here at Concordia. Um, the immediate here to my right is world-class drummer Pete Erskine, who you I'm sure no and love for numerous recordings. We have PAS Hall of Fame member Bob Becker uh, from Nexus and Yurika Kumura, who's a virtual marimbas joining us from Japan. And they'll all be presenting clinics and master classes and uh, performing a concert tomorrow and playing with the uh, percussion ensemble in our afternoon event. So I just thought it'd be a good chance to maybe get to know these artists a little bit and maybe something you haven't heard or read about them. So maybe we'll start off by just naming teachers that were influencing your lives in percussion. Uh, who would like to start? Yurika? Uh, my teacher was Keiko Abe. Uh, she was a virtuoso marimba, and she was a pioneer, so I could study with her. It was fortunate for me. Great. I got to study with uh, the legendary William Street at the Eastman School of Music, and also uh, his successor, John Beck who was uh, recently replaced there, uh, but had a great career at the school. I studied with uh, Professor George Gaber, uh, both at Indiana University and uh, before I got to college at, at some summer camps. Um, I was also fortunate enough to study xylophone with Billy Dorn and drum set with a number of teachers that included Paul Guerrero, uh, Clem DeRosa, Alan Dawson, uh, Louis Hayes and Ed Sof. So these are names that have gone around for years and we should be familiar with if you aren't already, so do some research. Uh, I was telling Peter earlier, um, when I was at Ohio State University as a master's student, he came in for our first day of percussion that I witnessed there in 1978. And as wow. a matter of fact, to, to his keyboard studies, he had just finished Indiana a little bit before that, but uh, I was teaching a lesson to a, a junior at the time, uh, Jim Rupp, matter of fact, and we were working on Porgy and Bess. And I remember when you came in the door and said, I played that at Indiana with Gaber. And I think you picked up the mallets and played a couple bars for us. So, and you were- How did he do? Drum set. He, I was, Peter does everything great, of yes, course. I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> but it was terrific. Uh, since this is kind of a PAS video, uh, I think uh, we've all been to the, PAS IC convention and uh, PAS has had influence on our lives, all of us and me included, you know, witnessing all of your concerts and clinics and master classes. So are there any special events that come to mind from PASICS or anything that PAS has uh, helped you in your careers? Well, I'll start. Please, um, uh, the PASIC conference, the annual convention, is the drumming highlight of the year for, for me and I think for all of us. Um, we uh, have a chance to reunite with, with friends and colleagues, but we get to see our heroes in action. And, and when I say in action, I mean not only on the stage playing their instruments, but uh, in action in terms of how they deal with other people. And, and we learn how to be um, artists who are also human beings. Um, and the entire three or four day uh, conference is, is an opportunity uh, for the older generations to be mentors, you know, to people they've just met. And, and that's, uh, that's certainly a, a very strong part of the jazz tradition, but I think in, uh, especially with drummers, my, my wife is, has, has pointed out repeatedly to me, she says, I've just never seen a group of musicians like drummers, because <laughs> we just love sharing. Uh, you know, our knowledge and our experiences and even some bad jokes from time to time about what we do. You know, PASIC is always uh, a spectrum and it's nice for that. Uh, you see the youngest and newest players in music and then you see the oldest and most revered players and music. So you may hear a, an unknown vibist playing some incredible music and then the next day you'll go and hear the Emeritus Symphonic uh, presentation, which is Eureka and my favorite thing to go to. Mm. And uh, you can see and hear these guys who we all listened to growing up on recordings, and there they are, playing all those licks that you've practiced yourself. It's fantastic. It's, just, it's an amazing gathering. You know, my students went three years ago when YouTube did your uh, session and uh, played Alabama Moon and whatnot. And, 
just to see the interaction of all the percussionists and you know, to see, well, there's Vic Firth. He's a real person. You can shake his hand and, uh, mm. and talk to Bob Becker and get an autograph and, and sit down and have a cup of coffee. It's, it's, it's just an amazing... Uh, you know, I have, I have to say, though, that uh, uh, when I was serving on, on the board, the, the goal or the, the struggle, really, was how do we extend or expand what happens at PASIC year-round? And um, this is a uh, burden as well as opportunity that falls on the shoulders of, of the people who get involved and organized at the state and local level. And nobody does it better than David Eiler. Uh, his are the most ambitious and best organized and most musically fruitful uh, days of percussion that I've experienced. And this might be, is this our third one together? It's your third. And Bob has been here four. Uh, More than that. Four, I, think. I think I hold the record for the he number of record. appearances yeah. at Concordia He's been Day here of twice Percussion. Twice with Nexus so. and then at least twice by himself. Yeah, yeah. So Yurk is first. So Yurk <laughs> first. Um, and it's always great to have them back and, and you, you know, just world class artists. You know, about uh, PAS, you know, it's, it's kind of a, almost an international love fest, I call it. <laughs> you, know, you see people once a year, or if you miss a, a year or so, and it's like you, you saw them yesterday. And, you know, you shake hands and you hug, and uh, you don't see that with other instruments. I mean, you got 5,000 of your closest friends at the convention, and it's, it's something I look forward to. If I had to miss a convention, I don't know what I would do. I would feel lonely. I mean, the year would be <laughs> a, feel, a feel loss less down. for me. You, you, Lauren, uh, Vogel Weiss, uh, I uh, had a dinner with her and her husband at, at a Texas Music Educators, TMEA, what, whatever that yeah. stands for. Um, and he said something very interesting. He said, I've never s seen another setting where a group of professionals um, are so willing to get together and share their trade secrets. I mean, you guys are... are openly, you know, showing your competition how you do what you do. And, you know, I'd, I'd never even thought of it like that. And I said, well, of course, it's, you know, it's natural because we're all, we all have our own accent and language and vocabulary. Uh, but it's true. It's, and and that's, that's that element of music that I think sets it apart from not only uh, a lot of other arts, but from other things in the world. Well put. Yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> at Pace, you're just uh, you know, in my memory. You know, I mean, if you pick the top five, I can't do five. You know, maybe one convention is five. But the last time you two were here as a unit was when Nexus was here, and you guys had just played the year before. You soloed with Nexus, the improvisation on uh, one of the evening concerts. Right, right, right. And then we and did the thought, piece Polta here. Right, we need to replicate that here for our day of percussion. And, and That's the idea, sure. Mm. Play. And the same thing with your duo a couple of years ago. Uh, the, my students now that are seniors, and when my ensemble performed at Basic, the, yours was the last event that we saw before we hopped on the plane to come back. Uh, yeah, thanks for staying for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a highlight for, for both of us to play that uh, duo performance, uh, not only to showcase Yurk as uh, great arrangements, uh, but to... Uh, you play for a large audience of your peers. Uh, the basic audiences are the greatest uh, groups to play for uh, as a percussionist. Okay. Nexus has played, I don't know, we've played over a dozen PASICs over the years and we've done some significant things. Like I, we were the first group to play any of Steve Reich's music at a PAS convention. First group to play Cage's Third Construction, things like that. Uh, and the response, the reaction from the, the audience is always uh, spectacular. So I just keep wanting to go back there and sink into that feeling. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, propose a suggestion to PASIC, uh, advocate an idea that Nexus um, came up with, along with, with, with some input from the host, this was at the uh, um, Hanover Expo mm -hmm. a few years ago, um, and as part of this World Expo, there, there was this percussion conference. I forget the exact name of it, um, but the really cool thing was uh, every day ionization was performed, at least two, two to three times a day by different combinations of players, and then the cage construction was performed every evening. 
by a different group. Yes, and also so, Rain Tree uh, by Toru Takemitsu was one of the group uh, pieces. So each ensemble that was part of that event uh, played th that. those pieces. That was Amadinda okay. and uh, Krumada, Nexus, and yeah. you were uh, part was, of every well, ionization. I was part of every ionization. That was really fantastic. Like a snare drum part. Yeah, well, we, uh, the, the there was, a, there was, was also a quartet from Mexico. Ah, that's right, City. Tambuco was mm -hmm. there. So we had enough players to do all that stuff. And what was fascinating was hearing uh, the incredible differences as well as similarities uh, in how to perform like the cage piece. So instead of thinking of the programming of as many different pieces as possible, to have different groups play the same piece night after night, uh, it was the, uh, I mean, sorry, I love PASICs, but it was probably the most instructive uh, three or four days I'd ever spent getting to experience and witness that and, and it's an idea I'd love to see PASIC uh, adopt. Thanks, Great. I agree. That was an, a unique concept. John Wire came up with that, of course. That was, uh, of course. So we have it on tape. So yes. any PAS board <laughs> members or executive committee or someone who would like to take one that responsibility is now out there. So uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So thanks, Peter, for that. Uh, maybe one final question. If there's any um, really memorable experiences in your career that kind of come to light that you might share, uh, either exciting or uh, something that an audience member might uh, appreciate and, or get a kick out of. I know you have lots of stories, Peter, but you know, uh, some you can share and some you can't. But uh, uh, in your career, anything that maybe happened a little different or just the most exciting thing you've ever done besides being here, of course? <laughs> well, in relation to PASICs, uh, just to narrow it down a little bit, because uh, anyone who's had a long career like uh, we have had, uh, there's a lot of standouts. It's really difficult to pinpoint one, but uh, the PASIC in uh, 1992 in New Orleans was uh, especially enjoyable. Uh, that was the one where we were able to play, Nexus was able to play at the, uh, the old Orpheum Theater. And we did our Rags to Riches show, so that was with a theater orchestra, a, a soprano soloist, uh, Nexus, and we played a whole concert of repertoire from the era, and we finished it with a silent movie. And Red Norvo was sitting in the front row, right in front oh, of me. Oh, my goodness. And so that, that kind of stuff, that's typical, actually. That happens at PASIC a lot, that, that sort of uh, amazing reconnection or historical... Uh, uh, moment. It's very, uh, very nice. And so I, that, that I one remember that show. stands that was out for, yeah. for me. Wow. Well, I wish I'd been there. Yeah, where were you? We needed a drummer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, the basic that, that comes to mind for me was, uh, uh, it was a few years ago where Mike Minieri was doing a, a presentation. And for all the years I'd worked with Mike, we'd never talked about like how he practiced. And, and, and here he was uh, showing how this pretty complicated scalar and, and arpeggiating uh, uh, thing all, you know, chromatically. And I was just dazzled. I said, wow. I mean, because you know, he's a great player and improviser, but um, how well he, he was playing this and, and hearing kind of what went into the... What, I guess what pretty much was the creation of, of his style. That, that's such a, an integral part of the way he phrases and plays. That uh, that was really fun. And then we, and we got to perform together later that night, and, and, and that was very good fun. Yeah, my, my memory, though, of Bob Becker, the first time I met you was at the first Indianapolis convention, and that sticks in my mind. And you probably don't remember because it was early. That was the one where Nexus played that tremendous final concert, and we had the Bones player and you did five encores. That was in Ann Arbor. That was Ann Arbor. Eight, 1984. Well, there was one in Indianapolis where you also played. <laughs> yeah. Indianapolis. Uh, oh, yeah. That was but Percy Danforth, the uh, Bones the player. Great player. Yeah. But I was working on a little paper at the time for graduate school, which eventually I finally got finished, a little history thing. And I had sent you a ch couple chapters because uh, we had emailed, or not emailed, what email those days, but uh, you had right. a copy. And on a Sunday morning after the convention, it was an ungodly hour, like 7.30 or something, you met me in the uh, restaurant, and we talked for about an hour, hour and a half on what you found in those first couple of chapters that I should research further ah. on that history of the marimba. I see. So I, I Did you do that. it? 
Uh, I did. Oh, okay. I finished, so it, it got approved. So I, uh, I'm Very a doctor, good. whatever that means. But um, uh, the, the time was just just great, and, and you to take time out of your schedule and having performed you know, with Nexus the night before, and uh, so I appreciate that as well as I appreciate you all being here. Thank you. And if there's any final thoughts, um, anything you want to say? And we... well, we appreciate your uh, inviting us to be here today, and it's a great uh, opportunity for the three of us to work together. Uh, First time in, in this particular uh, orientation, and uh, some repertoire that's kind of new. Do that we're going to give we'll a, do that tomorrow. Give yeah. it give it a try tomorrow and see Great. what we can do. Appreciate that. Yeah, so. and if we're lucky, we'll appear at uh, future PASIC playing some of this music. I'm sure you will. So that's our first uh, drum break video from the Day of Percussion here at Concordia, on April 1st. Believe it or not, no fooling, 2017. So. Thanks for sharing it with us. Hopefully you found something that you uh, can take to the bank. Thanks. Thank you.